Well, good morning and welcome to Health Talk here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX. I'm Paul Thomas and in the studio with me is Mr. Bill Kearney of North Lake Medical Pharmacies. And Bill, what's new on the horizon and uh, how are you? Well, I'm, I'm fine. It looks like uh, we're getting uh, a, a little bit of rain today and I, you know, I just, I had some, uh, Christmas lights on my fruit trees to, to keep them from freezing. And mm. yesterday I said, well, it's not going to get cold enough to do that. And now it's going to be down in the 30s that night. Yeah, so. I saw we're supposed to get a yeah. pretty good cold front coming yeah. in. And snow in the Sierra. and It's a, a little bit different than what we experienced uh, the last couple of weeks. But we're um, uh, looking forward to certainly getting more rain if we can. And I don't think there's going to be that much. But, um, of course, uh, a lot's happening with people's health. And, uh, Consumers Reports just uh, came out with their uh, April or on their May um, uh, magazine, and uh, the very uh, front of the cover said, "Pay less for your meds." Uh, tired of uh, skyrocketing prices and smart strategies that you could have for staying healthy. And of course, I I always wonder when I see this because normally they're promoting the chains. And what they're saying is, and, and they would have if the study had come down uh, uh, perfectly uh, fine for them, but it didn't as much as many of you think that you're saving money on mail order and you're saving money by going to uh, a chain pharmacy. It was interesting. They took uh, a um, 100 drugs and they uh, called, or not 100 drugs, 100 pharmacies throughout the United States and uh, called uh, the pharmacies for the prices that they would charge for uh, Actos generically, uh, Celebrex generically, uh, Cymbalta, Lipitor, and Plavix. So, and they went to a Health Warehouse, Costco, Independence, Sam's Clubs, Walmart, Kmart, grocery stores in general, Walgreens, Rite Aid, and CVS Target. The amazing thing about this is, uh, I don't know what healthwarehouse.com is. Uh, that was the most inexpensive. And uh, Costco was the next for uh, 30 days worth of all those medications was $105. Uh, and of, of six different prescriptions. And independent pharmacy, community pharmacy, was only $2 higher and this is the interesting thing. Then we get into the the, the uh, chains, Sam's Club, which you've always heard was the most discounted thing of Walmart that there is, was $153 opposed to Costco and Independence, which was 107 Then you go to Walmart, and it's four times higher, uh, $518 for those same six drugs. You go to Kmart, and it's higher yet at $535 for those drugs. You go to grocery stores and uh, as a, a whole, and it was $565. Now, remember, for an independent, it was 107 and Costco was 105 Now we're up in close to 6 and and, and more. Walgreens, which I worked for for 15 years, was $752. Rite Aid was $866 for 30 days of these medications. And good old CVS Target was the highest priced place that you could buy prescriptions at $928 for a cash price for these drugs. So, um, you know, much of what we see is or what we hear is um, uh not true. Uh, there was a spokesperson for Rite Aid that said uh, the company wouldn't couldn't explain the differences. Our shoppers, uh, and they had shoppers that went to these places as well as calling them uh, without talking with the pharmacy staff who helped them at each location. Um, CVS used discounts to lower their shoppers' cost by about $86. Another said that we had to pay the store's full retail price of $135 for a specific drug. Um, Rite Aid near the headquarters in uh, New York was able to get the price of a Torvastatin, the generic version of Lipitor, 
down to just $18 from $300. And uh, at uh, Independence, it was Costco was $13 and Independence was $15. So um, there are ways to save money on very expensive medications. And to to give you the whole picture, yesterday we had a person that came in with um, a, a specialty RX um, prescription that was supposed to go to specialty RX and they went to a chain pharmacy that took that um, and we tried to run it through our system and it was $2,000 for a 30-day supply. It was, um, uh, we got it down to $698 for a 30-day supply. Um, but that's the best that we could do. So it does help to shop around. Uh, I, I know that many of you are experiencing uh, having to transfer your prescriptions from CVS if you've got controlled substances and, uh, and you're under a lot of scrutiny because we have to make sure when we fill those medications that we're not infringing on the law. And, and the price may be different depending on uh, what kind of insurance that you had, but you no longer have that choice uh, to go to CVS, and you have to go to somebody else that will take it. Now, we've had several people come in from out of town, uh, out of the county, that wanted to get um, their drugs filled, evidently uh, feeling that we were more lenient than other counties, and we have turned them down. Uh, and they they tell us that we can't turn them down, and we tell them that we can. And that's one of the red flags that pop up. Why are you going to uh, Lake County when you live in San Joaquin Valley or you live in Sacramento County or you live in Sonoma County and getting that prescription here instead of where you live. So uh, it's uncomfortable uh, to say the least to have to go through this process, but the way health care is going, uh, you're going to have to... Uh, make some decisions about which way uh, you want to go. Um, the two highest priced national retailers, CVS and Rite Aid, had prices uh, closer to $900 for those five drugs, where it was uh, just briefly over 100 for Independence and for Costco. Um, and they actually took prescriptions to CVS and Rite Aid to verify what they were told, and they got uh, mixed results with some staff members using store coupons and other vouchers to offer their shoppers much lower prices when they found out they were shoppers. But the truth is uh, it just costs more and unexpected costs increase uh, uh, while you're on Medicare D and uh, other types of systems uh, are going to cost more because of uh, they have you in a category. If you have Medicare D, there's only certain companies that will be in Lake County. Uh, there's only certain companies that will allow you to uh, get a, um, a, a discount on some drugs that others don't. Uh, mail order drugs are more costly. Uh, consumers um, recently searched for the price of two common drugs, generic Lipitor uh, and a generic Cymbalta that's an antidepressant and pain medication, and noticed something curious in some cases. It costs more to have the prescriptions mailed to you than filled in person at a pharmacy. If one plan, for example, a full year's worth of uh, both prescriptions would cost $577 through the mail, but only $341 in a store. And, and you wonder how that can possibly happen, because some plans require uh, or strongly encourage you to fill all your maintenance meds that you have that you take for chronic prescriptions through mail order. I just had uh, a notice from Humana, who's uh, what I have my uh, prescription plan through, and they listed three medications. And they said, we can save you money if you get those prescriptions on our mail order plan. And, uh, I, you know, I've had these letters so many times. I've been in business uh, 15 years with Walgreens and 38 years with uh, my own pharmacies. I get these letters all the time and I write them back and I said, I am the pharmacy. Thank you. I don't need to get the medication from you. Um, but it is uh, against their policy many times for pharmacists uh, to tell you that it's cheaper 
to go on our cash plan. We actually ran our cash plan for this individual uh, the other day and got the prescription down from $2,000 to 688 But um, we encourage you to uh, go through our cash plan and see if we can save you money. And just many times we can. It's cheaper to buy it uh, on a competitive list of generic drugs than uh, it is to run it through your mail order plan. So uh, this becomes just as complicated as everything else about uh, health care. A drug costs more with insurance. And uh, why it happens, it could be uh, companies called pharmacy benefit managers, which we've talked about before, uh, act as go-betweens for drug makers and pharmacies, and they set higher prices on uh, medications than other drug stores. So when asked to explain the clawbacks, the PBMs didn't comment directly, saying only we support the patient paying the lowest price available at the pharmacy counter. Well, let me tell you, I told you briefly last week, one drug, one drug that we dispensed a month supply of uh, was an HIV drug. After we had reconciled our prescriptions, saying we made $15 or whatever it was, they clawed back six months later $720 from that prescription. So we actually had a $700 loss by dispensing that prescription that we didn't know when we filled that prescription. And you will say to me, how is that legal? It's legal because uh, Obamacare back in uh, uh, six or eight years ago passed the ruling that allowed um, these clawbacks to occur, they're called DIRs, and uh, they were meant to go to the pharmacy and the patient for a lower cost of the drug. They're being sent to the insurance company and the pharmacy benefit manager, and we're taking the loss on it. That's a law. That isn't just a regulation. That's a law. The only way we can combat that is to look at that prescription uh, when it comes in and reconcile it at the time of what we know is, and we're trying to make that law transparent so at least we can see when we bring the drug up, if we're going to lose a thousand bucks by filling that medication, we're not going to fill it, no matter what the insurance says. So, um, and, and that's what's happening across the nation, not just in California. Um, it was um, unbelievable that they could take that much in, in in uh, a couple of my pharmacies, in last year alone, 2017, they clawed back $100,000. That was after we reconciled, after we reported what we were earning from, from uh, either either we lost a dollar and a quarter or um, we, which we fill many drugs uh, through a lot of Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, Catamaran, uh, United Healthcare that we actually lose on when we fill, but we make it up sometimes if you take five or six drugs, we make enough on the uh, on the other five drugs to uh, make it a, at least a little bit profitable by filling the prescriptions. So, um, and then you don't know when a drug that you've been getting forever is going to go up in price, an old drug. Uh, that's been on the market for years. You remember um, Martin Schreckel, the CEO of Turing Pharmaceuticals. He bought the rights to EpiPen, and he bought the rights to uh, a malarial drug called Daraprim. Raised the price on the Daraprim from 350 or from $13.50 a pill to $750 a pill. And the same thing with EpiPen. It went from $100 to six or $700 cost. He didn't do anything to change the drug. He bought the company and changed the price. Uh, and that's what happens all the time. And now there is a new group of people that are uh, getting involved in prescription drugs. And they're taking drugs that were uh, like ibuprofen and Pepsid together uh, and making that a uh, a, instead of a 200 milligram, 160 milligram maybe of ibuprofen, instead of 40 milligrams of famotidine or Pepsid, it will be 30 milligrams, and uh, they will charge $3,000 a bottle, 100 for those, um, and it's just simply two drugs that you can get 
over the counter, or not over the counter, but you can get generically for uh, less than $20. And they're charging over $3,000 for a prescription. And it's legal because they are not giving the same, and then they're, they're signing contracts with pharmacies and uh, PBMs that uh, determine ahead of time where those prescriptions will be going, and then they will mail those prescriptions out all over the nation, and the insurance companies are paying for them. So uh, the insurance has really uh, changed what drives up the prices and uh, how they're um, uh, making agreements with uh, pharmacies that are on the cusp of doing it legally or illegally, walking, you know, uh, walking the, the gray line, so to speak, and taking a risk at it and getting by with it. And uh, that's happening right here in Lake County. It's not just, uh, I'm not saying the prescriptions are filled here, but there are people here that are getting those medications. And uh, it, it's a shame the insurance company is allowing it to happen and paying for it. So uh, generic drugs like tetracycline, which used to be a dollar and a half or 500 milligrams, 100 of them, uh, has gone up to almost $1,000 a bottle now. Um, drugs that old drugs that have been on the market that has the competition has dwindled and there's only one generic manufacturer making it anymore will triple or quadruple or a hundred times the price because there's nobody else that makes it other than Mylan Pharmaceutical or uh, Par Pharmaceutical or somebody like that that's the distributor so you can um, uh, get a, a a big difference in uh, a drug that you get one time and filled, and then the next time it's uh, gone up tremendously. And there's nothing that's more uh, critical than that than uh, topical steroid creams that have changed drastically uh, from uh, less than ten dollars to five and six hundred dollars for a tube. Uh, the other things that that change are. Uh, old antibiotics that have been around a while and people are going to the newer antibiotics so they're not prescribing uh, the older ones anymore and then you get a specialty uh, physician, a dermatologist or somebody that, that realizes that old medication is, is better than uh, some of the newer ones on the market and prescribe uh, tetracycline and it's not covered on your insurance because the cost is so much and you end up on a maintenance medication uh, doing, uh, paying a hundred times more than you would have paid 20 years ago and it's exactly the same drug. Um, under Congress's most recent budget starting next year, consumers who wind up in the donut hole and that's on Medicare D. You spend so much on Medicare D and uh, first you have to get the deductible out of the way and then you spend up to a limit of, uh, I think, 3,500, uh, will uh, more and more people will end up in the donut hole and have to pay only 25% of their drug costs. Um, and some consumers with Part D coverage may start to see discounts when they fill a prescription. So Medicare is suggesting that pharmacy benefit managers redirect some of those rebates uh, they currently receive from drug companies to consumers but it's unclear when that will happen. Well, I can tell you when that will happen. I'm 75 years old. I probably won't be around uh, by the time that happens. Uh, unless there are people in, in, uh, in Congress and the Senate that are uh, interested in health care, and I have not seen that. Uh, I, I certainly haven't seen that locally. And um, I haven't seen that uh, nationally except in Georgia, Kentucky, and Iowa, uh, those three states are very well informed about uh, the cost of health care and the cost of medication and how that are keeping uh, a lot of people from getting healthy because you deserve affordable medication. Um, no American should have to choose between filling a prescription and paying for food or, uh, or rent and situations that we've heard about over and over again from uh, people that uh, come in the pharmacy. Uh, Consumers Union, the advocacy division of Consumer Reports, is working to ease that burden by identifying and uh, promoting uh, reforms, specifically that all consumers have certain rights in the marketplace and they should have access to medication that's safe, effective, and affordable. 
they should be able to safely purchase medication approved by the FDA from other countries if they have to, uh, where drugs are uh, good quality and cost significantly less. Canada is one of the places where they have a, a very good system to identify uh, drugs that uh, are counterfeit or not effective. And insurance shouldn't be able to raise the prices or stop covering the drug during a plan year. And that's what happens to us when we sign somebody up for Medicare D plan. And right then, it happens to be the best plan available for that consumer and the formulary of drugs that they're on. And three months after they've started uh, on their new contract, which starts on January 1st, uh, they have to decide by December 7th, December 7th, what they tell you they will cover, and beginning January 1st, what they actually cover, can be a completely different thing. They can change that formula at any time and change the reimbursement at any time. So um, if you want to help us fight, become uh, more educated with what's going on out there when it comes to uh, health care coverage and especially the prescription coverage. We are just, um, uh, the higher drugs get, uh, the less profit we make because, you know, we have to, to be smart about uh, lowering our costs as much as we can, and we do that with rebates from uh, the manufacturers. When those go away, uh, you will see a lot more pharmacies uh, disappear, as you're seeing today. Uh, we had a, uh, there was a pharmacy in Kmart in October, I believe it closed. There was a thrifty up at the top of the hill in the old shopping center. They disappeared. We have a, a partial pharmacy at CVS. Um, there, and, and these are all chains. And we're talking about an independent pharmacy that's been here for 38 years and still fighting back to make sure that we can provide uh, a lower cost to you and uh, as, as much as we would like uh, to be something that's affordable to you, but a lot of it's not determined by us, it's determined by the federal government and they point the finger at uh, the pharmacy, but the pharmacy isn't the one that's um, raising the price. It's either the corporate level or it's uh, the pharmacy benefit managers or the insurers themselves. So. Uh, be smart, be safe, um, check with us, check with your insurance, uh, ask a question on why uh, a lot of people over the first three months of this year were asking why their drug price was so much higher. Well, at the first of the year, m a lot of Medicare D plans have a deductible. So you have to meet that deductible before uh, you can um, get that lower cost. And once that deductible is met, your price goes back down to hopefully what it was before. Uh, and the same thing happens with uh, if you have a share of cost on Partnership Health or Medi-Cal. Um, and it may be every month that you have to meet that deductible because if it's a share of cost, you do have to meet that deductible every month. So just because you met it the first month doesn't mean that you don't have to meet it again. Now, the secret is to get a 90-day supply so you don't have to uh, meet that share of cost on the prescription plan anyway uh, for only every 90 days, not every 30 days. So um, it, it is going to be um, really remarkable about uh, how much you can save if you work through the system. I had uh, a uh, acquaintance yesterday that uh, their partner was uh, a, a veteran, and we were talking about the current uh, way that um, the opiate uh, problem is in Lake County and all over the United States and the world. And they were telling me what the VA does every month. They send them, you know, there's no shortage of oxycontin and oxycodone and hydrocodone and hydromorphone and morphine, uh, whatever you want. Every month they send it to you, whether you ask for it or not. And people that are on the VA, whether it happens to be opiates or whether it has to be uh, uh, respiratory things for uh, asthma, for COPD, uh, your closets are full of those drugs. And you talk about a way of wasting money. The federal government, who's supposed to be the watchdog on everybody else, um, and there's fewer people that have ever served in the military uh, that are working in Washington, D.C. right now. Uh, hardly anybody is a, a, a veteran when you come to the Senate and uh, the House of Representatives. There are a few, but most of them aren't. 
and it's down, uh, I think, I don't know if it's in the single-digit numbers. I know it's down below 20 percent of the people, and so they're not even aware that this kind of thing is going on. Uh, as many times as we write letters, as many times as we try to inform the public of what happens here in the of course, one of the big problems is we don't see that patient because they get their medicines from the VA. And uh, the VA mail orders them the drugs, and they they just take it. And uh, sending it back doesn't do any good, so they end up bringing it to us to see if we can destroy it. And it's you talk about what a tremendous waste this is in uh, prescription drugs uh, all over the country. Uh, it is, is, is probably the most staggering number of the value of those drugs that are being sent to veterans that they are not even taking, and they end up disposing of them or throwing them away. So um, uh, educate yourself. I know that some of you have been very uncomfortable with uh, having to uh, move all your prescriptions from uh, one pharmacy to another when it came to your pain medication, but the truth is uh, we don't. Uh, want to be just your pain doctor. Now, if you're hospice or you're a dentist or uh, something similar like that, um, we're not going to um, be as, uh, as strong about transferring it, and we will do whatever we can to uh, satisfy your prescription needs, but you need to make sure that uh, you understand that this is what the Board of Pharmacy wants, uh, this is what the State of California wants, they want you to go to one pharmacy, and especially if you're on pain medication. Uh, I just had a physician yesterday, which I probably talked to five or six physicians every day on their prescribing of opiates, and this physician had written a letter to the insurance company saying that his patient was stable on this much of an opiate every month, and a California state law says you can't mandate anybody to change a prescription if they they are well controlled on what they're what they are on right now, what this physician didn't realize is the federal law is much stronger than the state law, and the federal law says if it clearly is uh, there has been no attempt to reduce uh, the dosage on this patient for many years or many months, uh, it needs to be attempted. Um, and it puts the pharmacist in a bad light because the pharmacist has to follow the federal law as well as the state law. And um, is, is it better to have some the, the federal government or the state government come in and just say, you can't give this individual this drug at all? Uh, if you make an attempt as a physician or as a practitioner uh, to uh, uh, get a, a reduced dosage or a reduced quantity, and we document that so when the DEA or the Board of Pharmacy comes in, we can show that there was a dose reduction uh, attempted. Uh, I had another patient yesterday that had uh, not been able to take one drug, and um, that was a pain medication, and had given the medication that he uh, had been taking back to the physician and the physician had written a new prescription for um, a, a new medication for the pain relief, and the physician had written down the wrong drug that he had returned, and I couldn't fill uh, the prescription until I verified it with the physician. The physician was very happy that I'd contacted them. The patient was very happy that, uh, that it, it got resolved, and uh, the patient ended up getting the medication. But it's an uncomfortable position sometimes for us to be in because the reason they're going after the doctors or the pharmacists instead of the doctors is we're the last step in you getting um, your medication and we're the ones that can uh, get in the way, so to speak, and we're the last shot at uh, whether or not you get the medicines or not. So uh, it, it's just a difficult time to go through. Uh, we'll spend more time on this as this crisis goes on. Uh, we're going to take a break uh, right now, and then we're going to start talking about uh, a drug for rheumatoid arthritis. Many patients with chronic pain end up taking pain medications from many different physicians. Hi, my name is Bill Kearney. 
Pharmacists and owner of North Lake Medical Pharmacies. Each of your doctors may not be aware of the medications prescribed by other doctors, and the result is an increase in the risk of side effects that don't necessarily come with better pain control. The drugs are usually prescribed for pain and for a short amount of time, but the length of time can get lost in the shuffle. If you're taking multiple medications, sit down with your pharmacist and review all of them, not just pain medications, but all your medications. Ask us about our medication review program where you bring all your medications into our pharmacist. We will look at all the medications, both prescription and over-the-counter, to check for duplications, expired medications, and possibly discontinued medications. There are no charges for this service, and it's a free service, and you don't have to be our customer. North Lake Medical Pharmacy is in the Hill Road next to Sutter Lakeside Hospital and outside the Bruno Shops Mall in Lakewood. The Ukiah High School Band Spaghetti Serenade Fundraiser is Saturday, April 21st at 6 p.m. at the Ukiah High School Cafeteria. Come and listen to the Ukiah High Band and enjoy a spaghetti dinner. Dinner includes spaghetti with red or white sauce, bread, and salad. Tickets are available at the Mendocino Book Company from Ukiah High School Band students, or you can call 462-3475. Who was your hero when you were a kid? Whether it was Joe DiMaggio or Jackie Robinson. Rosa Parks or Sally Ride. Bogart or Brando. You're just the right age to do something important that you can be remembered for. Even if you're in your 50s, 60s, 70s, or beyond, you can register to become an organ and tissue donor. Surprised? You shouldn't be. Today, people of all ages and even with health conditions can sign up to donate the gift of life. And it's so important. Every age, every ethnicity is needed. If we all signed up, imagine the lives we could save. The families we could help. So whether you admire John Wayne or James Dean, Robert Redford or Roberto Clemente, Elvis Presley or Ella Fitzgerald, do something important that could make a real difference and change lives. Get the facts today and register to become an organ donor. Find out how at organdonor.gov or call 1-866-99-DONATE. A message from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Health Resources and Services Administration. We bring the community closer together, supporting business in every way. We're helping make your dreams come true, working hard for you. The Lake County Chamber of Commerce would like to recognize their member of the month, Tompkins Tax Consultants. John and Diane Tompkins have been serving Lake County since 1974 and have been a member of the Lake County Chamber of Commerce for 24 years. They provide services to many small businesses and individuals in Lake and Mendocino County. Their main office is located in Lucerne off Highway 20, and they also have a second satellite location in Lakeport at 576 Lakeport Boulevard. For more information, reach them at 274-1843. Lake County Chamber of Commerce, we're steady and strong, help us shape the future. All right, and we're back. Well, we are. We were going to be uh, talking about uh, uh, a drug for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, which isn't a new drug for rheumatoid arthritis, by the way, but um, you'll see a lot more options for uh, methotrexate, and that's the drug we're talking about, and it's still the first line for most rheumatoid arthritis patients. Uh, it's also used for chemotherapy. Uh, it can be hard to tolerate sometimes, making it uh, tempting to go to, uh, to other drugs uh, like sulfasalazine or Humira. Um, but they're finding out now that a subcutaneous methotrexate, uh, which we've used it orally before all the time, uh, may have a, a lower GI uh, side effects, I mean stomach irritation and gastrointestinal uh, than the oral, and be more effective because it's better absorbed, um, especially at doses of 15 milligrams uh, or more per week, and that's usually what you take, and we always have to be sure when we dispense methotrexate, <clears throat> the directions instead of uh, one a day, it's one a week. Um, and the evidence that uh, it works is uh, better is, uh, is pretty uh, impressive. Uh, it uh, also has auto injectors, which are these 
uh, syringes that uh, inject them automatically like an EpiPen where you just uh, put it on your skin and uh, it uh, activates the, the release and gets it into your system. But uh, those can cost up to $470 to $650 a month. And they may have to be filled by a specialty pharmacy, which is <clears throat> a pharmacy that uh, uh, does has a special license to do uh, a lot of cancer medications and a lot of different medications because they get a higher reimbursement. Um, but uh, vials and syringes are a lot less expensive. Uh, it's two and a half milligrams per milliliter, and uh, for uh, a Z-Tap, which is uh, a, uh, a vial that you use with uh, that injector, but it's not that expensive compared to the auto injectors. And there's also an oral solution that may be an option if uh, patients can't swallow tablets, but it costs at least $190 a month. So <clears throat> again, methotrexate is one of those drugs that's been on the market for years and years and years. And here we are now because we have a new way to administer it, uh, the price is going way up. So uh, there is uh, oral methotrexate still on the market that causes some GI side effects, but uh, sometimes they split a once weekly oral dose into two to three doses, so they're given 12 hours apart, and that uh, makes it less irritating to the stomach. Uh, folic acid sometimes, five milligrams once a week or one milligram daily to limit the mouth sores. Uh, GI upset, liver damage. Uh, you know, I have a lot of people, I mean, not a tremendous amount, but a substantial amount of people that take methotrexate orally <clears throat> for rheumatoid arthritis. and uh, the, the side effects don't seem to uh, discontinue them taking the medication. So, um, and sometimes if you switch from the oral to the subcutaneous at the same weekly dose, uh, if you have a poor response or uh, intolerable side effects, it, uh, if it isn't enough after at least three months, then advise adding more and uh, you know, continue on uh, the other medications that you're taking for rheumatoid arthritis. For those of you who don't know, uh, rheumatoid arthritis is <clears throat> a lot different than osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is what most of us get uh, as we begin to age, and it's an inflammation of um, the bones and the tissue around the bones. But rheumatoid arthritis is the one that you see people having those gnarly knots on their hands. Uh, sometimes they have difficulty uh, sleeping. Um, sometimes it's confused with uh, uh, other disease states, fibromyalgia, a lot of autoimmune diseases. Uh, not the easiest to diagnose in some situations and uh, very painful. And it uh, affects, you can get a fever from it. Uh, and you don't always get all of these symptoms at once. You can get some uh, all together. Uh, some will just be a single episode of that, and then it will reappear. Um, so uh, just remember that uh, when you're talking about arthritis, there's a huge difference between the one that most people get. And, I mean, we have even juveniles. I have a... Um, a uh, my granddaughter has a, um, a son that has juvenile onset rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, she is, uh, and, and he's had it for five or six years, and he's been on a program. He's involved in sports and uh, involved in a lot of things, uh, and still continues to, uh, he'll be graduating from high school uh, shortly and then going into college. So it's something that can be tolerated and can be treating, and there are drugs now that actually uh, uh, modify the, the way the drug, uh, the way the disease affects the system and can actually <clears throat> not cure it, but certainly delay a lot of the actions from the disease state. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Shingrex. You, I get calls about it all the time and people asking about it all the time and that's the new one for shingles. And in the past it was Ostefax and now it's the Food and Drug Administration and the Center for Disease Control recommends Shingrex over Zostefax. 
The problem was until April, most insurances uh, didn't pay for it. Now uh, most of them do. I haven't tried Medicare yet, Medicare D, uh, but uh, a lot of the local insurances pay for it. It still has a healthy copay in some situations, like 75 bucks instead of 150 bucks. But um, but a lot of them have a low copay also. So uh, if you're thinking about uh, getting the shingle shot, the most it would cost you is $150. Um, and then you have to get two shots. And these go into the muscle. They go into your arm just like most other shots do. But the one uh, before this, Zoxavax, was under the skin. <clears throat> so this goes in the arm, and then two to six months after you have... Uh, that first shot, you get the second shot, and, and that's a separate payment because it's a separate, uh, exactly the same dose, only you have to give it twice. Um, the Zostafax has to have been given at least 60 days ago before you can get the Shingrex shot. So, and not very many people fall into that category, but it can. Um, and uh, the Zostafax probably will be continued to be made. Uh, they're not going to discontinue it uh, very soon, so uh, work we're going to make sure we educate you on both things so you know there is a choice. One of the huge differences is between this vaccine and the Zostavax is this one's 99% effective. The other was uh, a 47% um, effective, so much more effective. Uh, than Zostavax, but most of us that got the Zostavax didn't get shingles. Uh, we, uh, there were some people that had, had shingles before that got it after they had the shot, but they got a very mild case of it. So um, we expect Medicare D plans and other payers to cover uh, this uh, and ensure that patients uh, get the second dose and make sure that uh, we realize uh, if, if you don't know what shingles is and you haven't seen the vivid advertisements on uh, television about uh, uh, what these blisters look like, that is not uh, a mirage you're seeing. It really is uh, that nasty looking and uh, it is really that painful. So uh, you want to make sure that um, if you're over 50, um, you're not going to be covered by Medicare D, but your other insurance will probably pay for it because this one is indicated <clears throat> if you're over 50. So uh, we uh, would want you to uh, not be at a loss to get it if you're eligible for it and if your insurance pays for it also. Uh, this is the time to, uh, to do it. It's, we started buying... Uh, a couple a day. Uh, now we're buying them by boxes of 10, uh, so we don't run out when uh, when you need the shot. Yes, it's a little crazy around there with uh, all the opiate things going on, and uh, we'll uh, get through that uncomfortable time in about 30 days, and uh, uh, just make an appointment. Just come in, and uh, if uh, uh, it's too busy, uh, make an appointment or call us and say, you know, when is Bill going to be there? Or uh, one of the pharmacists that has time to give it, Diane is there on Fridays and Saturdays and Mondays, uh, and we'll get you the shot. <clears throat> and Larry's there the other four days. So we can do it on any day of the week, and uh, you just need to let us know. And uh, we have to uh, activate this. It comes in a two-part uh, step, so we have to... <clears throat> excuse me, take from one vial and go to the other vial <clears throat> and um, mix it up so uh, it is uh, activated and uh, it is going to work within your system. So if, in fact, um, <clears throat> the sun comes out again, Paul, I suppose you're going to be out in your pool. Uh, well, i got to set the pool up first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it comes down during the winter time. Well, I'm going to finally going to get my heater fixed uh, enough so uh, we can get in it. And mm -hmm. I thought summer was here, but what we're seeing right now are an awful lot of people uh, that are going to the dermatologist because uh, they didn't protect themselves very well, and they have cancer. They have skin cancer now. Most of it isn't melanoma, but uh, especially when spring starts and we start seeing those 
nice days that uh, you just can't wait to get out in the pool with your, your kid and have a good time and uh, win a water fight or lose a water fight, whatever you're supposed to do. Uh, you need to make sure that you take uh, as many steps as you can to uh, avoid skin cancer. Now, keep in mind that a lot of the skin cancer that's happening is because of what you did as a child. And people my age uh, during uh, the 60s and 70s uh, were using uh, baby oil with iodine in them, especially females, and uh, laying out in the sun with absolutely no protection. In fact, uh, probably even more likely to get a third degree sunburn than somebody else. So um, there's a huge amount of people that uh, many Americans may not be uh, consistently taking uh, risk, uh, taking the risk of sun damage as they should. A uh, large survey of more than 31,000 uh, adults. Uh, you know, where I, where I saw it really bad was in Ireland. Um, a few years ago, I was there, and uh, they actually, in, in Europe, you can go almost any place uh, to find sun. If you don't find it in the country you're living in, you get on a little airplane and you fly over to someplace else that's sunny, and you get sunburned during the holidays and <clears throat> and what they call uh, holiday time, which is vacation time. But we found out that a third of the United States adults are getting sunburned every year. And that number goes up with uh, higher risk groups. So those who were Caucasian, young, and had sensitive skin uh, got the most sunburns, according to the study. I had uh, a patient in last week, and her husband had just been to the dermatologist, and they cut uh, a major core out of the top of his head. And he was raised in Southern California, and he was a surfer out in the sun all the time. And this came from uh, those days, and a skier. So, um, but even people with darker skin like I have uh, are typically thought to be at lower risk, but you're just as susceptible. Uh, the big picture, which is uh, concerning, uh, tells of the risk of skin cancer, and it's uh, pretty easy to stay out longer. Now, when uh, we just had returned from Tahiti a couple of weeks ago, and you're much closer to the equator there, and so when you can lay around your pool here or, <coughs> excuse me, go out in the boat for um, a half a day <coughs> at a time and um, put on sunscreen and not get burned, you can't get by with that going into these countries where, number one, there isn't any smog, there isn't any fog, there, isn't, there aren't trees in the way to, to get... Uh, break up those uh, <coughs> sun rays substantially, <coughs> excuse me, just like the desert. And <coughs> so you think you can stay out there as long as you could. You put on sunscreen, you put on a 30, you stay out there for two hours, and you come back and you're baked. And, um, and if the person you're with is a little stubborn about putting sunscreen on, as some people in my family are, uh, then you find out that uh, they're really putting themselves at risk because just because you put it on your face uh, and you lay on your stomach isn't necessarily going to uh, help you from getting burned on your back. So <clears throat> I'm going in for my appointment uh, the 23rd of this month, and I'm sure uh, they will find some, uh, some places where, and I'm very good about covering my head because it's bald, and my ears and my nose, <coughs> and I don't get burned much uh, anyplace else, although I do put <coughs> sunscreen on those, but not as frequently. So I'm, you know, uh, I'm not as smart as I should be either. So, and that's just being, uh, that's just part of where you start. Um, some people use self-tanners, and some people... Uh, binge on <clears throat> going to a, a tanning booth uh, that were that will likely get sunburned even in the tanning booth. So people who aren't caring for one aspect of their health uh, might be more likely to engage in other risky behavior, which uh, could get you more sunburn because they're outside more than the others. <clears throat> but there were other findings that were a, a little bit more surprising. Those who regularly use sunscreen were more likely to burn than those who didn't. And you wonder why that would happen. It may be because 
Some sunscreen users may have a false sense of security or don't follow the label directions properly. And you throw into this fact that these people are in the water as well. So, uh, and they were in the water when they were in Lake County, but when they, and they were in the water when they went to another country or another area. <clears throat> but uh, they weren't putting the sunscreen on uh, every hour when they were in Lake County, and they, w they, they didn't when they were out of the county either. So you have the tendency to burn much more rapidly, uh, the rays be much more intense uh, in these vacationing areas, and, uh, and, and not think about it. And the other time is when it's cloudy. You know, the, um, uh, there, were, there was a time <clears throat> over in uh, Morea that it was cloudy as could be, and we had two or three people that got really sunburned uh, without ever seeing the sun. So um, you need to protect your skin. You know that uh, that doing so can be beneficial. At my age, uh, it's probably not going to keep me from aging uh, uh, anymore because I'm. You know, it's pretty pretty hard to get older than I am. Um, but don't think about tanning easily, that not having skin cancer in your family or other factors that means you can go uh, without protect, uh, protection. Um, all people, no matter your skin color, your age, your family, or history of skin cancer, you're all susceptible to be damaged from the UV rays. Uh, a new study found that while sunburn is the most common among young adults, and those with sensitive skin, about 15% of people that are age 65 or older still experience sunburn every year. Uh, older adults grew up with different social norms related to sun exposure uh, and greater total lifetime exposure and are rarely targeted by uh, sun safety interventions. Uh, I grew up on a farm, <clears throat> and I've said this before. We were out in the sun uh, when it wasn't raining all the time, and frequently as a teenager, uh, you would have no shirt on. And you would just get black. I used to be a, uh, my first year of college, I was a, uh, a flag man for uh, a construction company in, on an interstate highway. And, I mean, I got so dark, uh, you would have thought that I was a different nationality. And I never sunburned. Uh, I was out there all the time. But now I'm at risk for <clears throat> some of those, some of that behavior I had when I was growing up. Uh, doubling up on protection is important because even the best sunscreen applied properly uh, can't give you 100% uh, protection from those UV rays. And um, sunglasses help protect your eyes and wide brim hats help cover your ears. And I mean, I, I know some people that uh, dress up in long sleeve shirts, long packs, uh, long pants and go out and sit around the pool. Um, and there were several people in a cruise line that I was on that, was in, that were in uh, shirts and long pants and sitting around the pool reading. Uh, and, and the other thing we forget about is in the old days when we used copper tone or one of those uh, uh, protection factors, um, it, was a, it, was a, it wasn't coated. It was like a two or a three, which is little sunscreen at all. It just kept moisture in your skin. Uh, a little sunscreen won't cut it. The average sunscreen user applies uh, 25 to 50 percent of the recommended amount, according to the American Academy of Dermatology. Uh, and a recent study published in the Journal of, uh, of uh, the Academy found that among 2,000 people, uh, people offered free sunscreen at booths placed throughout a state fair. Only 33 percent of those who used it applied it. <laughs> to all of their exposed skin. The rest focused only on their faces and arms, leaving the other areas exposed. One ounce uh, is the amount that would fill a shot glass. And for those of you who don't drink alcohol, a shot glass is something that you put a, 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 a ounce of whiskey in or two ounces of whiskey. And um, if you're not drinking booze, use a shot glass to put on sunscreen. Uh, you may need more or less, depending on your body size and what you're wearing. Uh, some of the swimsuits today means you probably need a half a bottle on to cover all your skin that's exposed. Um, if you're not sure how the best sunscreen is, use uh, a buying guide that's on the Internet or 
uh, in a magazine. You smothered yourself from head to toe with sunscreen, and now you relax for the rest of the day without any worry. Is that right or wrong? Well, we forgot one thing. You need to reapply it two hours after swimming or sweating. And there isn't anything uh, that is such a thing as a safe tan. That is injury to your skin. And a lot of times we find people trying to get a tan to get burned, uh, and they say avoid tanning altogether. And unlike uh, the ultraviolet B rays, which are more prevalent in the summer, between 10 and 4, the, a, the UVA rays are prevalent throughout the day. No matter what the season, no matter what the weather, uh, they can pass through clouds and even glass. So uh, just because you're behind glass, uh, that's one of the best ways to get a sunburn, actually. Uh, and uh, as the UV rays are less intense, meaning they don't leave us looking red or feeling hot, uh, they're potentially more of a health threat to your health uh, than the other one because they're destroying more tissue. So um, just uh, to get you thinking about uh, during this uh, uh, snow up in um, Tahoe this weekend, um, there are uh, ski lodges that are going to stay open uh, a little bit longer. Some are closing. <clears throat> some were closing this weekend. They're opening back up because of the a chance of more snow, <clears throat> not all of them, but th that's a great place that you need to worry about getting sunburn. Uh, I don't go skiing anymore. I used to, uh, loved snow skiing, um, I, but I am on the water a lot, and I do um, uh, have that tendency to uh, stay out there without reapplying sunscreen, just like most of the rest of us, and especially if you're younger and you have a beautiful uh, beautiful skin and uh, you want to uh, look good and, and you want, don't want your skin to age, uh, take advantage of that opportunity and um, as you will start to notice, you'll see more and more people that are uh, a no tan whatsoever and they don't want to have a tan and they're protecting their body. So we want to be sure that uh, you're one of those people that pay attention to uh, taking care of uh, your body like uh, those people do, and uh, keep um, yourselves as uh, protected as you can. Uh, we also want to remind you about other things now the summer's coming. You can step on nails. You can get poison oak. <clears throat> you can uh, uh, need a tetanus shot. Uh, certainly come to us. We can give you a tetanus shot without any problem. Uh, poison oak and poison ivy are very prevalent around, uh, and it's just starting to really, with this rain, get real juicy so you can get those blisters. So I uh, want to remind you we're there to give you uh, every, every kind of bit of health care that we can. We're still delivering to uh, Kelseyville and Riviera and uh, Lakeport, Nice, Lucerne, Upper Lake. Uh, just let us know a day ahead of time, and we'll get the prescription to you. And... Uh, Know that uh, uh, we have uh, two pharmacies for you at uh, 5136 Hill Road East across from Sutter Lakeside Hospital and outside the Bruno Shop Smart at 347 Lakeport Boulevard. Give us a call there at 263-1328. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, Bill. We'll see everybody back here again next Wednesday at 10 a.m. for Health Talk right here on AM 1270 and 96.5 FM KXBX Lakeport. <laughs>